Let's take a closer look at the Cadillac VLMDH prototype. Cadillac partnered with the famous Italian race car manufacturer Dallara and decided for an large, naturally aspirated V8 with 5.5 liter displacement. In the balance of performance rule set, you want to tick all boxes with your engine, so large capacity and turbocharging to get the most performance and to reach the set maximum power curves. For more information on this, check out my other video below. The fact that Cadillac decided against turbocharging might not be ideal here, but it also leaves them with a number of advantages. First of all, it's by far the best sounding engine of the four new LMDH cars. The next point is that it's significantly less complex in comparison to the competitors. And it doesn't need intercoolers like its sister car BMW, which is also produced with the Lara's LMP2 chassis. So we can see that the Cadillac has tighter side pods because they need less cooling. But like the BMW, also they have additional radiators and the sides behind the radiator package. Because of the tighter side pods, they don't need a turning vane to make sure enough air gets to the rearward radiator. It's interesting to see that Cadillac split the roof scoop intake, which BMW uses for one radiator, into two ducts to cool battery and electric motor. Because of their small size, it might be necessary to still use the additional radiators in the side pods. And, Unsurprisingly, we can also see that Cadillac is using the rocker mounting points on the standard extract gearbox, like BMW. Also, this engine is not a fully stressed member, since they use a carbon fiber pipe to reinforce the back of the car. And let's talk about aerodynamics. Cadillac uses a front with lots of through flow like BMW and Porsche. They use a high sitting crash box, so it's clearing the path for the airflow. We see a huge front wing flap and reinforcements at the sides. Cadillac is using brake ducts in a high, slightly curved area, which provides less pressure but the intakes are relatively large and the team even blanked them. When the nose is off, we can see the large deflectors to push the front rear wake outboard to keep the underbody flow clean. And we also see the tea tray underneath. A nice little detail are the two intake scoops underneath the nose. Also, the Cadillac uses large but simple dive planes at the side. The front exits to extract front diffuser air are the same as on the BMW. There's one slot above and one further back at the side. As we said before, this air then flows to the additional rear radiator instead of using it for through flow like Toyota. Also, the Cadillac uses large brake ducts, which are hidden underneath the huge design panel. At the back, we can see a large three-piece gurney flap to release the hot exhaust gas and a smaller cooling outlet. This is not surprising because the car is not turbocharged. There is a very open structure behind the rear wheels and a large two-element rear wing on top. So all in all, the Cadillac is a beautiful and the best sounding LMDH car. Because of its naturally aspirated engine, the car is a lot simpler than the competition but they might lack some tools to get the most out of the BOP regulations. The simplicity could help them with reliability and endurance racing when it's competing against a lot more complex cars. So how do you like the Cadillac V LMDH? Let me know in the comments below and check out my online courses about top edge car design and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member to support the channel. See you at the next video.